Hello everyone, this is James Wong from the Microsoft Resources Tech Team bringing you another video today. Our focus today is the Revit 2012 deployment tools that Autodesk released early June. As I'm sure most of you know, there aren't too many options for customization with Revit 2012. That's why Autodesk released these new tools to help you guys out. So let's um, have a little quick overview of what I intend to cover today. We'll start by discussing the Revit 2012 deployment and the new tool released by Autodesk. Uh, we'll close out by doing a demo of how to modify content location as well as making some customizations to Revit behavior. We'll hit up the XML document using Notepad or Notepad++ and we can tweak it to our heart's content making changes as we need. Alright, let's start by talking about customizing Revit 2012. When you create the Revit deployment, you can change where Revit content is stored. By default, it is stored on a C drive under the program data folder local to each workstation. Larger firms prefer this content stored on a network, either on a shared folder on the server or even a DFS target to maintain a level of consistency throughout the office. In order to configure Revit, in the past you would have modified the Revit INI file on the deployment image. By modifying the INI file, bin managers have a lot of control on how the software behaves, including suppressing prompts, controlling selection behavior, and even controlling graphic settings. Well, for 2012, this process has changed. There is no Revit.ini file on a deployment image. Instead, the INI file is created by another file called the INI file.xml file. During each workstation installation, the Revit.ini file is actually generated from this INI file.xml. All right, so let's create some deployments now. I have already downloaded the Autodesk deployment image. I'm going to have the deployment name here. I'm going to cue some music while we start this up. Admin path is going to be straight in my DFS path. Make sure your checkboxes are proper. you got a network log here. Go right ahead, click on next. I accept, click next. Enter your serial number and your product key. Make sure you select network license. Everything's pretty basic right here. You've done this before, you've done it a million times. Nothing too special. Before we click create, let's um, click on the little arrow. Have some settings to double check. You can actually add content if you have um, additional content packs or XML documents. You want to keep mind of some configurable folders here. By default, it's going to go into the C drive. I don't want that. I'm going to actually specify the shared path. It's going to be on my DFS. I'm just going to paste the path here and type in IS. Do the same for library. So I actually set these folders up before I started this pat, um, process, so make sure you guys do that first. And there you have it. Scroll down. And then want to double check to make sure that the include computer names are in the error reports. Always want those. And since I do have a Revit server, I'm going to load my Revit server name here. Make sure you type it in. And if you have a Revit server, make sure you turn it on because what happens is that it's going to try to run a query on it. Right now my RS1 server is off. 
so it can't verify. But that's okay, we'll let it go. Alright, let's click on create. Let's run through its process and we'll be good to go. Click finish. So now that we just finished the uh, deployment creation, we're going to do some modifications and customization. I've already download downloaded the Revit 2012 deployment tools. I'm going to copy the content from the zip folder and place it onto my deployment image. Right here, paste. And I'm actually going to create a new folder. It's going to be called content and this is where, gonna where I'm going to store all the imperial templates and family templates, detail components and all the good stuff. Before we begin, we actually have to do some prep work. I'm just going to browse into admin image x64 rac 2012 and make a copy of the INI file.xml. And this is the original file so we don't want to mess with this. Just going to paste and call this INI file dash backup. In addition to that, I'm going to make another copy of that and I'm going to call it INI file dash MRC. The INI file the MR dash MRC will have actually all the configurations that I want to push out to all my users. I already have some configurations done and in a Revit dash MRC file in my folder structure. If you look here, I'm going to see that the content paths are correct. It's in my DFS share and will be shared throughout all my offices. You can see that they point to a centralized location for content for Imperial templates and Imperial library as well as for the IES file locations. Notice also at the bottom I have some configurations. Um, suppress new features workshop. The press and drag I always turn that off. Um, display recent files to zero. I'm going to copy this file and I'm going to move it over to our um, path here. And right now, I'm going to use the Revit deployment utility I just extracted from Autodesk. You have to view the license agreement, browse to the custom Revit INI file, then the original INI file, and also the resultant XML file. That's why I created the MRC XML. Before we actually click on execute, I want to copy another XML file that I created earlier. This file is the master.rac.xml file. So when Revit is installed on each workstation, each installation will want to trigger an overwrite to the shared content directory. Since my shared content directory is on my DFS and the DFS gets replicated to all my offices, I don't want that. This file will actually prevent overwrites to my content directory. So click on the suppress content tab. And browse into the appropriate directories. Let's go back a couple of folders and go into the content folder and select the master arc.xml, verify your settings, and click execute. The custom ini.xml file is created. Click OK. And that's the first option. Before you go into deploying all this software to your workstations, let's go ahead and do a ini file.xml switch. The INI file, the XML, is still the original. We want to use the INI file dash MRC to be pushed out to all the workstations. So we're going to do a little file name switch around. And the INI file dash MRC, we're just going to call the INI file the XML. And there you have it. Right now, you're able to push all your customizations into your deployments to your workstations. So the second option is to make customizations to the Revit any file .xml file directly. You can do this by browsing into the file and editing the XML file. Since the XML file is just a plain text document, you can actually use Notepad to do the edits. But of course there's no formatting. So what I'm going to do is close this and use Notepad++. What it does is it has color blocks to ensure that the XML coding and the syntax is correct. You can scroll down and see the revit.ini file that gets created and all the customizations that we previously made. So in case you forgot a customization, you actually can add it right here. So right now I'm going to add 
an option to suppress tooltips. So the section name, data keys equals. All right. And since the syntax is the same as the top here, I'm just gonna copy, paste, save myself time on the typing, copy the section area, copy and paste that, check my formatting, and I'm saving, close out, good to go. Deploy via group policy or RCCM. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope this video was helpful. From the Microsoft Resources Tech Team, this is James Wong, signing out.